Hi, my name is Josh. I'm going to be explaining Proton NMR. So what is Proton NMR? Well, it's where we can put a compound into a machine, and that machine hits the compound with a magnetic signal. And based on that magnetic signal, it tells us where our protons are, are located in the, on the, in the compound. Well, how does it do that? Well, we're going to, I'm going to use the analogy of a bat. And so bats use sonar to communicate. And so when they give a little squeak, they wait for that squeak to come back to them. And however long it takes, they can judge the distance of different objects based on how long it took. Proton NMR is much like that. We judge where something is, where a proton is, based on the strength of the magnetic field that goes through that. And so here we have C2H5OH. Well, that's nice to know what things are in that compound, but we want to know what that compound actually looks like. How is it going to react with other things? So here we put our comp we'll say we we'll say we put our compound into our machine. All right, and it gives us this, it gives us this graph. We've got a couple of squiggles here, we got a couple of squiggles here, we got a couple, we got one squiggle down there. We see we got 3H, 2H, and 1H. What do those mean? Well, that tells us how many hydrogens it has uh, in that certain spot. And so we say our 3H has three hydrogens in that spot. Okay, that's one signal. So what's that mean? If we've got three hydrogens for one signal, that means all the hydrogens are in the same environment. So to have three hydrogens in the same environment, we could have something like this. All those hydrogens are equivalent, right? All those hydrogens are in the same environment. But you're saying, how do we know? That's what it looks like. Just because it's a CH3, that's very convenient for you to know, but how do we know it's not something like how do we know it's not something crazy like this? Well, that's where we come to our peaks here. Now we can see we have three peaks. We're going to go back to our bat sonar analogy. If a bat is flying through a room, and that room has a red chair, a purple chair, and a green chair, but they all, all those chairs are the same shape, that bat's going to peep, and all those chairs are going to look the same. Even though they're colored different, even though they're, they look a little bit different, and they're different from each other, it's going to know all those chairs are the same. Okay, so that's what we got here. We have all these hydrogens that look the same. Okay, we knew that. We have three peaks here. So what does that mean? Well, that brings us to our next thing that we need to know about the proton NMR is how many hydrogens it's next to. It also tells us how many hydrogens it's next to. So we use the rule N minus one or N plus one. It gives us the same outcome. We take our peaks and we minus one from how many peaks there we have. We got three peaks, minus one, they're going to be two hydrogens. We're next, this signal, this, whatever this environment is, is next to two other hydrogens. So we can't have this because this hydrogen would be next to no hydrogens. And this hydrogen would be next to no hydrogens, etc. So it can't be this. It can't be this at all. It has to be a CH3. It's got to be CH3. The only way we have CH3 is if it's a terminal carbon. So now we've got a terminal carbon. What's it next to? We have two hydrogens that it's next to. We know we've got something like this. Okay. We've got our two hydrogens here. All right, we have our two hydrogens here. 
Okay, so we know we've got our terminal, we've got two hydrogens. So that's the beginning of our structure. We see that up here we have C2H5OH. All right, so we've got five of our hydrogens right here. Cool, we have five hydrogens. All right, so where's our other hydrogen? Well, we see down here we have 2H, we got 1H. So what does that tell us? Well, this tells us we've got 2H. Well, we've got two H's right here. We've got two hydrogens right here. So that checks out. What's this nonsense? This looks like a mess. Well, normally when it's all squashed together like that, they'll give you a, a little window that's a zoomed in picture of what you're seeing. And it will show you, you've actually got something like that. So it will show you, this is how many peaks you have because you can't really tell from this. It's kind of messed up and kind of jumbled. We've got four peaks. What's that? What's that? Comp uh, what's that say about this? About these two hydrogens? That says these two hydrogens are next to three other hydrogens. So these are. We take our four peaks minus one gives us our number of hydrogens. They're next to. Okay, so we've got next to three hydrogens. That checks out too. So we've checked ourselves. We know that this structure right here is somewhere in our molecule. All right, but we've got one more. We have one more hydrogen. Where does it go? Well, this hydrogen has one peak, so it isn't next to anything, so it can't be right here. We can't have a hydrogen right here. Well, what else do we have in the molecule? We've got an O in the molecule. We've got an oxygen. Okay, how do we know where that is? What, what tells us that we have a, an oxygen? If we didn't know this what tells us we have an oxygen? Well, that comes from where our position are. On the number line here, the numbers aren't just for fun. We have one, two, three, four. What's this, what's this tell us? So the numbers correspond to the strength of the magnetic field that goes through the hydrogen. So with these hydrogens, there's electrons around the hydrogen. So those electrons are spinning around the hydrogen. They've obviously got a magnetic field. When the magnetic field hits the hydrogens with the electrons around them, it feels less of that magnetic field. Those, those electrons protect the hydrogen from the magnetic field. So the magnetic field hits it, it bounces off the electrons. And so it is protected from these electrons. When you have a more electronegative uh, compound, it starts pulling those electrons towards it and away from the protons. So in this case, if we had, say, a nitrogen, we've got NH2. So you've got an H2. So these, the nitrogen is going to start pulling the electrons away from the hydrogen. And so when the magnetic field comes to hit that proton, the hydrogen is going to feel more of an effect of that magnetic field because it's pulling those electrons away. So it's taking the electrons that would normally protect or shield, we call it, that those, those hydrogens and the hydrogens are feeling the full force of the magnetic field it's going through, towards them. All right. Well, what does that tell us? How much of a magnetic field is it, is it feeling? Well, right here we've got four, and there's it's usually a scale up to eleven, eleven or twelve, depending on what kind of um, groups you have on the end, like our carboxyl, yeah, carboxylic acid, will be way, way, way downfield. We're over at four. In between four, there can be there are several things. I've written a few of the things that it has down here. So a CH3 is going to be between zero and two. Well, that checks out because we have our CH3 between zero and two. 
right over at one. Very close, usually it's usually very close to one. All right, some of the things we have are CH something. A CH is connected to some group. Okay, that doesn't tell us a whole lot. A CH O is also between three and five. That tells us a little bit more, that narrows it down. We've got an OH group is between, anywhere between one and five. That's not very specific either. But we see that we have two hydrogens. We know that this is correct. So we have two hydrogens next to three hydrogens. So that all checks out. And then we've got it over here that's about 3.5. Well, a CHO lands about 3.5, uh, or hydrogens connected to a carbon that is connected to an oxygen, and about 3.5, okay? So that kind of tells us that we've got an oxygen right here because we've got a group that's next to 3.5. Well, what else is up here right next to it? We've got one hydrogen next to our oxygen that's also next to nothing else. So how do we get a hydrogen next to nothing else? this oxygen. So now we've got a hydrogen that's next to an oxygen that's not next to any other hydrogens. So that one checks out also. So this is probably the structure of our molecule. So those are the basics of it. To recap, we have count how many hydrogens you have. We have one, two, three, four, five, six hydrogens. Count how many signals we have. We have one, two, three signals. So we have three different environments in this. And then we need to count the peaks on those signals to tell us where those hydrogens are. What are they next to? We call that uh, spin splitting. So what are these signals next to? And then finally, where on the graph do these signals fall? And what are the groups associated with those signals? I'm going to be right back with a little bit more of a uh, complicated uh, compound. All right, changing the things a little bit. So what do we have here? We have ibuprofen. Now this molecule we would not be able to figure out the structure that's based on the proton MMR. We'd have to have a carbon MMR. We'd have to have an ion. But in this case, we're just going to use this to build our hydrogen MMR. So our first one right here, oops, let's use a clean one. Right here, we have CH3, CH3, and CH3. Okay, these are all in the same environment, and they're all CH3s. So we know it's going to be close to one. So we're going to have a peak probably right down, right down here. Okay. But connected to that peak, we're going to have nine hydrogens. Okay? We've got nine hydrogens here. What's next? Well, we've got two more hydrogens here. We've got two more hydrogens right there. Okay? Well, that's also connected to, uh, it's also right down here. That's also going to be low on the uh, table. And it's next to how many other hydrogens? It's next to nine other hydrogens. Okay, so we have an, two more hydrogens that are going to be close to it. And we're going to have another, we're going to have a bunch of lines here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so we've got a bunch of signals right here. So that's right here and right here. We've got our two two hydrogens. So what does that make this? Well, since this is two hydrogens, we know we have to add two more peaks here because n minus one or n plus one will give us three. So it's two hydrogens plus one give us three. What else do we have some hydrogens? Well, we've got another hydrogen here. 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 
those are all connected to a benzene ring. So a benzene ring pulls, is actually going to, because of the uh, magnetic field comes through the benzene ring, it's actually going to amplify the magnetic field that those uh, hydrogens get. So we're going to have them up around seven. So how many do we have here? We have two and two. Are they in the same environments? Well, these two are in the same environments. They, they're right next to these and an H2 and uh, this other half of the benzene ring. So these two are in the same environment. So that's going to be one signal. We're going to have one signal together. Okay. That signal right there. It's next to two other hydrogens. It doesn't have any hydrogens here. It's next to two other hydrogens. So we're going to have three signals here. Now what about these two? Well, they're almost in the same environment. So they're going to be very close, but they're not going to quite be there. They're going to be very close, but they're going to feel more of a magnetic pull um, than these are. So we're going to have another signal right here and another three hydrogens right there because it's next to these two. Yeah, another two, two hydrogens. All right, so making our way, we've got, we've got this uh, hydrogen. Got a hydrogen here. Well, that's next to um, this benzene ring, and it's next to carboxylic acid. All right, what that tells us, what that tells us is it's going to be farther downfield. Okay, so we've got one hydrogen here, and we've got one signal, so that's going to be probably around here. We just got one hydrogen. And how many hydrogens is this next to? Well, it's right next to this one. This is another CH3. So we've got four signals here. All right, what's this next to? This is another CH3. It's going to be downfield because um, it's not really next to any of this, but it is close to these. So it's going to be higher than this. So we're probably going to put it right about here. We got a CH3, so it's, it's less shielded than these two, but is more shielded than this is. So we're going to put it somewhere around this area. It's next to one hydrogen, so we've got three hydrogens. We've got this signal right here, uh, little boom, and we have three hydrogens here, and it's next to one other hydrogen. So we're going to have two peaks. Moving on, we've got no hydrogens here, but we do have a hydrogen here. This hydrogen is connected to a car carboxylic group. And the carboxylic group is very obvious because it had it is all the way on the other side of the hydrogen. It is all the way right over here. Yeah, all the way right over here. Because it's so deshielded that part carboxylic group is pulling so much on those uh, electrons that it really feels a lot of the uh, force of that magnetic field. So we've got it all the way over here. And so that's how we would build our, our proton NMR. So we're kind of working backwards because we can't really tell what the structure is with just a proton NMR, but we can see where all of the uh, signals lie. So to sum it up, you need to know four things. The first is the number of signals. How many signals do you have? Oh, got yeah, one. Mark this. Yeah, one hydrogen. How many signals do you have? Second, we need to know the, where those signals are. Where are on the spectrum they are. What kind of and, and what um, groups? do those numbers correspond with? We need to know the integration of the signals. So the integration, how many hydrogens are in those signals? How, what's the number of hydrogens in those signals? That's all that means. How many hydrogens are in each of our signals? To tell how many hydrogens we have to make sure we count all our hydrogens. And then finally, we need to know the spin-spin coupling, which is just 
all of these, what are the number of uh, peaks in each of these signals? What are they next to? What other hydrogens are they interacting with? We can use all that as puzzle pieces to put them together. And so when we have something like this, that's very easy to tell. But you're going to have multiple H3s. It's a multiple of three, so we're going to have multiple H3s. We're going to have multiple um, terminal carbons. We're going to have something like this. That's an easy structure to know, especially when it's only got three peaks. You know it's right. It can only be right next to two more hydrogens. So this structure right here, we know we have it somewhere. Something we've got like this, that's the only thing up there. Many of these other places, there's a lot of things that can be between one and five. But the only thing this high is a carboxylic acid. So we know we have to have this group here. And when you have the number of carbons, the number of hydrogens so close together, there's not enough hydrogens to make all those carbons happy. So we know we've probably got a ring of some sort, probably a benzene ring, because there's so few, the, the ratio of hydrogens to carbons is so small. We've got two oxygens, so we know we're going to have some more stuff, possibly between one and five, but if it's a carboxylic group, we know where both of those oxygens lie, so we know we've got both of those oxygens taken care of. And so if we know we have something like this, a terminal, we have a carboxylic group, and we have a benzene ring. The rest is just trying to fit where these things get together. We're trying to figure out where, where does this one go? What can make this one uh, be next to other, to nine other hydrogens? Or where does this one go? What can make this be next to three other hydrogens? Or where do these go? What, what can make those uh, good? So we're, we're just trying to figure out, we're just trying to put, put all these pieces. We know we've got this piece. We know we've got a, we know we've got a carboxylic uh, group. We know we've got a terminal group and we know we've got a benzene ring. So now it's just trying to get those pieces and a couple of other pieces that fit together um, how we want to. That's all I've got. Thank you.